Good morning, church. I know it's a cold morning, but we thank God for the opportunity to come and worship him. I will be speaking this morning on the way of gratitude, but I want to call it the one out of ten phenomena, one out of ten phenomena. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, we just want to thank you for who you are. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the mighty one of Israel. You are our redeemer, our hiding place. You are our salvation. We give you worship this morning and we join the 24 elders in saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. We thank you for delivering us and translating us from the kingdom of darkness to your marvelous light. We thank you for what you have done for Camberwell Baptist Church, that for 150 years it has been moving on. You have given this church shepherds after your own heart. You have used this church to minister to countless people worldwide. We give you thanks. We give you glory. Accept our thanks even this morning as we look into your word, and it is in Jesus' mighty name we have given thanks. And the church said, what? Amen. Amen. So I want to share uh, on the issue of gratitude or thanksgiving. And I'm looking at a very interesting scripture in the book of Luke where 10 plead for mercy, 10 sick, leprous people plead for mercy and for healing from Jesus. Jesus is visiting this place, and the people who are sick know that he has healing virtue, he has healing powers, and they plead for mercy. And the 10 of them receive healing. The ten of them receive healing, but only one responds with thanksgiving. So ten plead. If you don't want to forget the message, you can put it in simple terms. Ten plead. Ten receive. One returns. That is the way you can put it. Ten plead. Ten receive. One returns. And the question here is, why is it that these nine that receive, why do they not come back to say thanks? What is the reason they don't respond? Is it something that is not within their culture to give thanks? Do they have amnesia, forgetting, like we normally have? That a lot of times we receive a lot of benefits and blessings and from God, from organizations, from our pastors, from our parents. But possibly we feel entitled. We feel that maybe this is something that they ought to do. We are not obligated to give thanks. Why is it that they are not responding to God or to God or to Jesus with thanksgiving? So that is the question I was dwelling on and I was wondering because that that question is important for us today because we can also ask, are we still having that same challenge today that a lot of us are beneficiaries of blessings, we are beneficiaries of favors, we are beneficiaries of goodness, and yet we don't respond with thanksgiving? Are we the nine out of ten, or are we the one out of ten? So this is the phenomena I want us to discuss, and it's an important one for us to look at. I would want to jump somewhere ahead a little bit, and because um, when one is preaching, it's important to look at this subject matter from different aspects. What is the important? Why is Thanksgiving important? I was teaching about the Lord's Prayer, 
and the different components in my last sermon here. And there was one aspect of the will of God. Our Father who art in heaven, your kingdom come, your will be done. And I tackled the issue of the will of God. And maybe one of the ways, what is the will of God? In one of the scriptures it says, it is the will of God for us to give thanks. It is the will of God for us to give thanks. So if you are looking for, uh, to understand the will of God, the different components of the will of God, it is not the will of God for us to be full of complaining and cursing. One of the things that I've noted while in Australia is that people here like cursing. It is another language. Apart from the Aussie language, there is a curse language, Aussie curse language. I see people cursing all the time and sometimes complaining. It is not the will of God for us to be complainers. It is not the will of God for us to be full of cursing. It is the will of God for us to give thanks. So the subject matter today is how can we inculcate a culture of thanksgiving? How can we inculcate this in our homes? How can we inculcate this in our society, in our workplaces? Why are some workplaces toxic? Could it be because these workplaces, there is no appreciation, there is no celebration? Could it be that some marriages fail because there is little of thanksgiving? So we need to look at this subject matter with the goal of changing our, the way we look at things and beginning to be more intentional in this activity of thanksgiving. The truth of the matter is this, that in church, among pastors, we go through burnout. And part of burnout is because we have a lot of people pleading for help and few returning to say thanks. Wives go through burnout. They keep giving to their husbands. Yesterday was our wedding anniversary. I flew from Seattle last night and uh, just got from the airport and my wife was waiting for me. She gave me the usual kiss. And we were recounting the years we spent together but I must admit, I have not given thanks as much as I ought to for the many things my wife has done. Yes, from the beginning, we even tried to teach our children to be grateful. Part of this praying for food is not just praying, Lord, bless this food. Include thanksgiving. We have tried as much as possible to raise our children with, the, with this issue of giving thanks, to teach them to be grateful that when they receive things, they should not assume that these things ought to happen. So anniversaries should be an opportunity for us to give thanks. We should look for ways of giving thanks. So in terms of the many, there are many people who plead for mercy, who plead for forgiveness from God, who plead for help, uh, we have a big need. And a lot of, we might not be like Jesus, who had the resort that he had, that out of the ten who pleaded, he healed all of them. As the church, we might not help everybody, but there's a big group of people that receive help from churches, from non-profit organizations, from parachurches, but a lot of these people that receive help I can testify that there is one out of ten that return. That will not be the portion of Camberwell Baptist Church. We shall be a grateful church. We shall be a church that returns to say thank you. Why don't people return? And what is the impact of ungratefulness and not giving thanks? When we don't give thanks, we cause what you call donor fatigue. People get tired. Somebody has helped you. 
You never say thank you. You demotivate them to doing a good act to somebody else because you failed to thank them. Not giving thanks can cause discouragement, disillusionment, and discontinuation of those good deeds. It might come across like you're insulting the person. It can cause a toxic culture. It can diminish trust and connection. This is what the impact of not giving thanks. It erodes the social fabric. It erodes the social fabric. So please, we need to be people who look for ways of giving thanks. So I want to move to how can we inculcate gratitude. And by the way, I forgot to thank Pastor Nathan for the opportunity that he has given me and Joel to preach here. We don't take it for granted. All right? He's the one who has been given that role here. So thank you, Pastor Nathan, wherever you are. The Lord protects you. The Lord provides for you. So how can we inculcate gratitude in our marriages? Take advantage of marriage anniversaries. Share with your spouse what you have celebrated. I hope I did that yesterday, but if I didn't succeed fully, I will have to continue today. Because our marriage anniversary, we have to continue celebrating. From our children, from a tender age, let's teach them to be grateful. When a sibling does something and they don't say thank you, remind them to say thank you. Parents should model a lifestyle of gratitude as opposed to cursing and complaining. Fill yourself with thanksgiving. Psalms 136 is a good one where the psalmist teaches us how to give thanks. He teaches us how to give thanks. He takes up the scriptures right from Exodus where the children of Israel are in captivity. And he says, give thanks to the Lord who delivered you from Pharaoh's hand. Actually, no, 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 I'm sorry. Psalms 136 begins with the creation story where he says, give thanks to the Lord who created the heavens and the earth. The whole creation story of, oh, he begins with the creation story. He brings us to Exodus where we should, he's reminding the Israelites to give thanks because of the way they were delivered from Egypt. He continues to when they are in Canaan, give thanks because he settled you in the promised land. And then he comes, give thanks because he has lifted the lowly. Almost quoting Mary who says, magnify the Lord because he has looked at the lowly state of his maid servant. He takes us from right from Genesis to, to the New Testament, teaching us on the thread of giving thanks. What has God done for you? Have you been looking back at what God has done from, for you? Where has he brought you from? Where has he brought you from? Do you have reason to give thanks? Can you say that the Lord is Ebenezer, that thus far that I have come, the Lord has brought me? Can you testify? Or you have taken for granted everything God has done for you? Please, let us inculcate thanksgiving. In our workplaces, if you are a boss or a leader in your workplace, and your employees are exercising and working hard to perform or produce, don't take it for granted. Say, you've done well. Don't always, I've worked for an organization where I've done so well, but one mis I, when I did one mistake is when I was called into the office. They forgot all the good I had done. Well, don't look at me. You have also been in a similar situation. Where people, they don't call you when you perform well. They only call you when you make mistakes. Why don't you also, as a leader, make sure that you appreciate those who perform well? That is one of the ways in our workplaces 
we can cal cultivate this uh, spirit of gratitude. For our pastor, Pastor Nathan, and those pastors that have served Camberwell Church, I've been here for one year. I've not heard of a pastor's appreciation day. I don't know what kind of church we are. When he was celebrating 14 years, I had, he stood here, he said, now today is when I marked 14 years, he even received chocolate. Was he the one to give us chocolate or we were the one to give him chocolate? We need to have pastor's appreciation day as a church. It's a suggestion. Where are we, not because he's asking, because the pastor is always praying for us. He's always teaching us. He's always mentoring us. Where do we, even one, one, one day in a, in a year, can we not have a pastor's appreciation day? I throw it to you. Think about it. That is one of the other ways we can inculcate thanksgiving in our community. Charity organization. The government ought to have initiatives when they celebrate groups like Salvos. One of the things I've appreciated in Australia is some organizations that go out of their way to help the needy, among them Salvos and others I will not mention. Vol many volunteers. These people need to be given an award. The, the people who do this lead this organization, they need to be awarded for great work they are doing. Community leaders. I suggested this to the Kenyan community leaders. There was one who has made a tremendous contribution to the, to the Kenyan community here in Australia. And a month or two ago, we held a dinner of honor. One of the ways you can inculcate Thanksgiving is by honoring them. This Kenyan came, he was a professor at Monash. He made, he really helped many Kenyans settle here and nothing had been done over 30 years. So one month ago, we had a dinner for him to say thank you for your tremendous, and he was in tears. Why don't we look for such opportunities of uh, initiatives that will cause uh, those who are leading well in our communities to be appreciated. In my tribe, there is a culture that when you are invited for dinner, you should not go empty-handed. You fill your basket with something to leave with your host. That is a culture of thanksgiving. It is called Goshokia Guoko. Can you say Goshokia Guoko? You so have written it there. Can you say it? I know it, sound, it will sound Greek. Goshokia Guoko is, 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 is giving th that somebody, and I'm not saying when you are given a car, I'm not saying respond with a car, but do something. Even send a thank you card. Do something small to appreciate the gesture of love. So, the Kenyans are coming to Australia and forgetting Goshoki and Woko. We should not forget some of these cultural things that are very important uh, in, in, in our communities. We need to be people who are grateful. I've just come from America, and some years ago I was in Chicago, Illinois, preaching in the Methodist churches. And it was my first Thanksgiving uh, you know, the uh, Thanksgiving, whatever, the, the, the holiday. Thank you, Lauren. <laughs> I've never been in America when they are doing uh, the Thanksgiving. And it is the biggest holiday, even more than Christmas in America. And I believe these are some of the things that make America great. Thanksgiving. And we were gathered in the home of Reverend Dr. Zaki, seated with his children. And they had come. Everybody must come. And we were giving thanks. I think that's a good concept. Even though we are not Americans, our nations, I wish I would tell the president in Kenya, why don't you have a Thanksgiving holiday? Not just a holiday celebrating all manner of things. I think Thanksgiving should also be included in our holiday. When we sit back and reflect and thank God for what he has done. Are we together, church? 
I am hoping and I'm praying that God is going to cause you to understand the importance of thanksgiving and that it will be something you model, something you teach and inculcate. I want to focus briefly before I bring the message to a conclusion on the one in ten phenomena because this one that returns to give thanks is counted among the nine forgets. And interestingly, the one who comes back is called a foreigner. Foreigner. Meaning, and it's, it's very sad, that the locals were taking things for granted. Because Jesus said, why is it that the, for the one foreigner is the one giving thanks? What happened? Sometimes there's a challenge that the foreigners are the most grateful than the locals. Let that not be our portion in the name of Jesus. So I want to focus on the one in ten phenomena for a brief time. One out of ten is a tithe. In the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 10 to 11, we are told about bringing our tithes into the storehouse. A tithe is the one out of ten. Again, another area where people never give. Only one out of ten tithe. In the book of Daniel, chapter 1, verse 20, you hear of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego being ten times better than the rest with wisdom, knowledge, another one out of ten phenomena. In the, the story about the Good Samaritan, in the book of Matthew 22, 34 to 40, the Good Samaritan, the priests are passing on the side of the road. This man has been injured. They pass. But one man stops and shows compassion on the injured man. The one out of ten phenomena. So, beloved, we can miss opportunities because the opportunities are before us. But it is my prayer that you shall be among the one out of ten who return to give thanks, who responds with compassion, who has the spirit of excellence like Daniel, who is looking for opportunities to make others appreciated. So I decree in conclusion that you shall be the one out of ten. Tell your neighbor, look at them if you have a neighbor. You shall be the one out of ten. Just tell them that. Humor me by talking to your neighbor. Tell them you shall be the one out of ten. Thank you for doing that. I want us to pray at this point and let us pray. Everlasting Father, we are sorry where we have complained like the Israelites complained in the wilderness and they forgot your mighty acts when you delivered them from Egypt. We too, Lord, have amnesia. We forget all the time. We don't give thanks as we ought. And we are asking that you infuse us and you infuse this church with a spirit of gratitude with a spirit of thanksgiving, that we shall give thanks in all circumstances. According to 1 Thessalonians 5.18, you don't tell us to give thanks when things are going well. You tell us even when things are going wrong sometimes that we should give thanks. Father, we are praying that you give us creative ways of, uh, of show, uh, giving thanks, that we shall always bring thanksgiving offerings, we shall appreciate those who are serving us in different capacities. Father, infuse us, infuse this church with a spirit of gratitude that even one Sunday we can come and just sing, giving thanks to you. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Master. 
and it is in Jesus' mighty name we have given thanks.